folks, Marcus here from the Ash and Fly Shop. Today we're going to tie a little summer steelhead pattern. I've got a trip coming up to British Columbia in about a month or so. And I have not tied many flies for it. So today we're going to tie a couple flies and I'm going to take them up to British Columbia and we'll see how they do up there. This is a fly that I've been tying. I've probably tied about a dozen of them by now over the past week or so, um, two week period. And something about it, it's gonna fish great down here, but something about it for BC, um, I think is gonna be really cool up there. Um, today I'm gonna do it in kind of a color pattern that I happen to like on the Rogue and the Klamath in the fall. Um, but you can play around with these colors um, once you get the basics of the pattern down fairly easily. So I just start my thread. Today I've got Vivis 140 um, in a hot orange and you could do might be better off on a fly like this going down to 70 count thread. Um, but I, I just like 140 so much because sometimes I'm really pulling on the fly and I like that stronger thread. So I start, you know, about an eighth of an inch behind the eye to leave me some room later on. And I wrap back till about an eighth of an inch above the point of the fly. And this is, this is going to be the work area for the body of the fly. You could come back further if you want, but I like my traditionals more than off it, more than um, not to be just on the straightest part of the shank. And then I'm going to tie in some of my super well organized and neat copper flashaboo here. Um, you can see it's handled well over the years living in my fly tying desk. Um, I'm going to pull six or so strands and clip them as close to the base as I can and then grab the tips, lay them along the body of the fly with one loose wrap and then a harder wrap and just pull those tips short. Thicker thread, something you got to think about. The more you secure your materials, the more you're going to build up the back of the body. Um, so just focus on if you have your thick intruder thread like this is um, focus on not letting it get spun up with your flash boo like it just did and trying to keep the wraps as light as you can. So I'm going to pull all that flash boo back behind here and then I've got small ultra wire and gold and that's going to secure um, the flashaboo through the body. And then on top of all of this, I'm going to take one black schloppen, um, five to seven inch black schloppen. Just take one of these guys, cut it right above um, the fuzzy part, the stem, peel back. If, if you're getting any inconsistencies in the fiber, just peel them back. So you can this is going to be a technique that's pretty common. Um, I'm just going to use half of the feather. And depending on how you tie it in, um, I tie mine in from the tip. Um, and I like to wrap counter to the body. So once you get your head around that, that means I'm going to peel off the right side of the feather um, and peel it close to the tip there. And this will all make sense in a little bit. And then I'm just going to tie in that break point on the tip right there. And I personally, instead of clipping that stem, like to bring it all the way through the body because then you have an even workspace um, as opposed to still continuing to build bulk up near the top or the bottom of the fly. I'm going to grab the very tip of that feather, clip it. And your thread, I've had a couple where I 
will end the body right at where I started my thread. In the dozen that I've done at home, when I do that, I tend to build up a really a bigger head than what I'm wanting on this fly. So I'm gonna stop this body an eighth inch or so um, behind where I started my thread. And that's just a little marker to help help keep me from building a big head. And this is, it's a good note. Um, unless you're really on it with your flies um, and your proportions and your sense of how things lay down, the amount of thread, it takes about a dozen flies, um, at least for me, maybe six to a dozen to really get the proportions like dialed in. Um, so I've wrapped up the flashaboo. I'm gonna cut that off and I'm actually gonna save these fibers for later, um, the excess, and you'll see why in a little bit. And then I take my wire and I try and wrap it consistently over that flashaboo. To me, flashaboo has proved to be um, one of the least durable body materials out there. So you need wire to secure it. That first steelhead that bites the fly, if you don't have that wire to secure it, those just rip it all out. Which one swung fly for, for one steelhead, I mean, that's not the worst thing in the world. But if you want it to last longer, securing it with wire is a good call. A lot of people will secure their schloppen or their whatever they palmer through the body with the wire too. To me, these have been relatively um, durable, so I don't have a problem with not securing them. You can secure them. The only thing I'd think about, depending on the material you use through the body to palmer it, this feather, some materials like schloppen are a lot webbier than others. Um, as you bring the wire to secure it, just wiggle it each quarter turn and that will wiggle through the, the webby fiber of the schloppen. Um, but like I said, I'm not super concerned about the durability of, of this feather here. And as you wrap, just kind of pull these feathers out, make sure they're not getting trapped down in there and bring it up in a nice consistent pattern up to where you stopped. I'll just hang this over, tie it off on my near side. Those top couple feathers will get bent back just a little bit. And then I'll clip this stem here. Nice thing about on a traditional to have a material like that through the body, it's just more movement in the water. Um, gives it a little bit of wiggle. Um, the next material gives it a bunch of wiggle. Um, and that's this micro pulsator black barred rabbit strip. And these things are super cool. Um, I like the micro on these guys. This is a size three hook that I'm working on here. Um, Daiichi 2051. Um, on a three or a five, I think you need the micro. Um, a full length rabbit strip would kind of just be a little bulky for this size hook. Um, on a bigger 1.5, you could, you could get away with a bigger rabbit strip or if you just happen to like thicker rabbit strips or want a bigger profile, go for it. Um, how long you tie this in just happens to do with the desired profile of the body. Um, I like this rabbit so far to be in the two inch range, so that's where I'm gonna do this one at. And tie it right at the top of where I've got my thread ended here. And then there'll be a couple securing thrap or wraps there. And then I can start to work above where I've ended this thread and this is where 
the couple strands of copper flashaboo from the beginning of the fly will come in. And I, to me, I'm not a big flash person. Um, I like accents of flash um, to catch light. I don't think flash, the, I don't think flash is super important if you're fishing in low light. Um, I think it kind of blends into its surrounding, but I do like a couple pieces if the sun's peeking through to catch, just to be a catch light as the fly's coming through the current. Um, that's just my theory. Some, some fish seem to like flash more than others, but I, I do well with just a couple strips of flash through my flies. So this is essentially the profile of the fly. You can choose to end this fly with a number of different materials. Today, I'm gonna use a barred schloppen from Montana Fly Company in the olive black barred. I've used black saddle, olive saddle, olive schloppen, black schloppen, guinea. You can use whatever, you're, whatever you feel like, but I like to trim the base of these feathers, peel away the fluff, um, and I want to just work with the clean part of this feather, um, the real spiny material. And because I've got the room for it, and because I like the look of it, I'm going to use most of this feather. Um, some people think less is more. Um, I tend to think more is more. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to tie this in at the tip. And I'm going to work with about two inches of this feather and bring my thread forward, try to secure it. And then I'm going to grab it with my hackle plier. Pull all those fibers down straight. Each quarter half turn, I'm going to be real sensitive to making sure that these fibers are laying down the way that I want them to. And this is ending up just about how I want it to, um, how I like it to. As you wrap your collars, you can choose to make them as densely wrapped or as lightly wrapped as you want. This one is a relative loose, loose wrapping. If I tilt this here, you can see some of that orange thread peeking through the fly. I don't mind that at all. Um, you'll see a lot of really tight thread wraps through collars. Um, some people, and you can if you would like to, you can do a really tight wrap, you can do a loose wrap, and then wrap your thread back on it. For me, I'm gonna keep this head of this fly as small as I can. And that's why I use the orange thread that I've got here, is it creates a little bit of a bright spot on the top of the fly. Just a little accent, something, if you've got low light, that little bit of a bright spot on the top of the fly probably isn't hurting. Um, probably helps the, the fish see the fly. So I'm just going to do a couple small whip finishes, put the thread there, and then I've got Loon Hardhead to finish this fly off. And I'm just going to use a very small amount of this hardhead. Rotate my vise. Try to touch each side of the fly just with a little dot. And if you don't have a bodkin on you, which I don't, you can use any, any relatively small surface like the bottom of this whip finisher to move that glue around. Get it to be nice and trim with the thread, I think that's important. A lot of these glues, if you leave a big, big area of built up glue, it seems to get cloudy over time. But if you've got it nice and sparse right along the thread, it tends to, to dry very clear um, and be 
be relatively durable. So this is a little summer steelhead pattern, size three, um, which is bigger than what some people use these days. Um, it's got a rabbit strip over the top, schlopping throughout the body, though you could use a different material, blueard pheasant, other materials like that. Um, those will work just great too. Little flash on the sides, a barred schlopping collar. Um, and I'm going to be taking a whole bunch of these to BC with me. I will dry fly fish as much as I can. Um, but it's nice to have a pattern like this in the box that you've got confidence in. This here is a great fall rogue color, um, November, December on the Klamath. Um, but I do them, um, I like them in a black wing with a blue collar for other places. Um, you could do purple with a pink collar. You could really do whatever you want. Um, and that's the fun part about about a lot of this tying is you have so much flexibility in the colors. So thank you very much for tuning in. Um, hopefully we'll have a picture to show you all with this fly in a fish's mouth at some point. Thank you.